Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, Dill. It is time. College football playoff predictions courtesy of you. And you know the boys mean business when we start trying to make our own brackets to show what we are thinking. We got our 12-team bracket. Dill, you have our 12-team playoff. I have some problems with it. This is the first time I get to see it. I know some Florida State fans are going to have some problems. I know some Michigan fans are going to have some problems. I think the first rule to this episode let them have in the comment section. Again, this is the best part about doing this is hearing from you guys here in the chirps. That is the beauty of college football. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. My 12 team playoffs still, I think Tuesday night, I'm still tinkering around with some of those teams. I still am not decided on who I'm taking for some conference championships as well. Without further ado, let's get into yours. Georgia coming in out of the SEC, number one seed. I, this is one I don't have a problem with. The U look just preseason. Carson Beck at quarterback. Line of scrimmage play is going to be top notch. There's just not many holes within this Georgia roster. Then you look at what they did in the transfer portal. It's the most complete team in college football. I think it's the most talented team in college football. I'm with you with Georgia coming in at number one. Now, here's the kicker. The number two seed, Dill, coming out of the Big Ten, Ohio State. Now, I'm kind of between Ohio State and Oregon. I know some Oregon fans probably going to be irritated with you, even though they you got them at the five seed. Give us your pitch on Ohio State winning the Big Ten in 2024. I think where I have it, and I think Oregon probably has a bit more firepower and explosiveness on the offensive side of the ball. I just think I look at this Ohio State defense. I think it will be next level good. I think the physicality they're going to play with is very unique, almost like reminiscent of maybe what Michigan was doing last year where that defense was just overbearingly good. There were no weaknesses. I think this, the fact that their secondary and defensive line as a unit are, are arguably the two best units in the country, I think kind of gives me or tips the scales to Ohio State for me. I just think their physicality will be a lot for Oregon. And Oregon's kind of building their way into being looking like an SEC Big Ten kind of school. But I do think they maybe are a recruiting cycler or, or, or two away from kind of matching what Ohio State's going to have because there's yeah, a lot who should be pros. Right I now. think one of the things that also makes you lean Ohio State is just so much experience. I mean, they had so many guys that could have gone to the NFL, decide to come back in 2024. Dill, you kind of said it. It seems like this Ohio State team in 2024 going to be kind of modeled after the Michigan team that we saw in 2023 win a national championship where you saw Ryan Day go out and get a guy like Quinshaw Juckins, Will Howard at quarterback, Chip Kelly calling the plays. This is going to be a relatively run-heavy offense with an elite defense. That was the recipe we just saw made Michigan, Michigan made work. I think Ohio State might be trying to replicate some of that recipe in the 2024 year. So much NFL talent on that roster. Here's another kicker. And again, Miami, Florida State fans probably going to be hot in the comments section. I don't blame them. Clemson, Dill. Clemson is growing on me as the season approaches. I look at this Clemson team. The first thing that stands out is they're finally healthy heading into a college football season, which just has not been the case over the last couple of years now. I think we all know what's contingent here. Can K. Klubnik take that step going into year two as a college football starter? What's your selling point here with Clemson coming out of the ACC in the number three seed? I think it's their defense. I just think their defense is probably on a bit of a higher level than Florida State and Miami. I also think the continuity that Clemson's going to have where they're getting so much back from last year, both on offense and defense. They have the star power on the defensive side of the ball. I think they have the recipe to be better on offense. I don't think they need to be the greatest team in the world. Frankly, I'm not sure Florida State will be the greatest offense in the world. And Miami, we'll kind of see. I think we've been looking for them to make that jump. The last couple of years, they've just underperformed where they're at. Miami's dangerous, and you see where I have them. I'm not saying I think Miami's very much in the mix for a playoff team. I just, I don't know. I could be falling back into the old, like, remembering Clemson from five years ago trap, but I'm, I'm taking them. Now, the thing with Clemson, the, the selling point, at least for me on Clemson, what was the biggest problem last year was the offensive side of the football, specifically creating explosive plays in the passing attack. I actually think this Clemson offensive line is going to be dang good. I think Phil Moff is going to be able to run the rock. If you're selling me on Clemson, I think it starts with, all right, Kate Klubnick going into another offseason as quarterback one with his wide receivers healthy. I expect the wide receivers to take a massive step in the right direction in 2024. And then on top of that, you have the Garrett Riley system going into year two. Now, I think the big question is, is Dabo Sweeney going to let Garrett Riley actually run this offense in 2024? Uh, this Clemson team is about as dangerous as it gets in the ACC because of how good their defense is going to be. I think the question mark is, 
not only to win the ACC, but just how dangerous this Clemson team can be in 2024. Does that passing attack take that step in the I'm right direction? Sure they, I'm not sure they need a wildly explosive offense to win that conference because I'm not – again, I – Miami's got the weapons to be a very good offense. I still think they got to prove it to me. In Florida State, obviously, there's a fair amount of turnover with what they have coming. So I'm not sure Clemson needs to be like an ungodly uh, explosive offense to win this. Yeah, and the what makes me, I've been pretty vocal. I have Miami winning the ACC. What tips the scales for me, I, I think Miami has a really good offensive line. I think Miami has the difference makers on the outside. I think Miami has a very, very good front seven heading into 2024. When I look at these two teams, I mean, there's a lot of parallels. I'm just going to go with the quarterback that I trust a little bit more heading into 2024. Now, if I see K. Klubnik light it up against Georgia week one and have a very good start to the season, my prediction is going to change a little bit because, again, this Clemson team with K. Klubnik playing like a five-star quarterback, it's a lot different than what I see with Clemson right now. And I think a lot of Clemson fans would probably agree with that too. If they see K. Klubnik put it together, the narrative around Clemson gets scary about this team heading into 2024 because it's a dangerous team. Going to the Big 12, number four seed, Kansas State, edging out Utah, sell the people on Kansas State because I certainly have Utah. I love Kansas State. I think that that them having a dynamic quarterback is going to be a serious problem. A lot of people kind of, I think, are overlooking. Like They've kind of been playing good football in spite of kind of up-and-down quarterback play for the past few years, it feels like. Will Howard was solid for them. Not great, not super dynamic. I think you could come in with Avery Johnson, that rushing attack with Dylan Edwards, and uh, the other guy I'm blanking on, but he's obviously – DJ Giddens, my guy. DJ Giddens, he's their bell cow. I think that'll be a really dangerous attack, a team that always has good offensive lines, even though they got to replace a lot. And their defense is returning a ton of really good players, especially in the back end. I think that is a scary defense for the Big 12. I think they're just – I think they can be more explosive than Utah. I think they have more continuity on defense. That's why I'm going to the, the selling point is Avery Johnson. I think you're right. Avery Johnson squeezed out Will Howard, who is now the starting quarterback at Ohio State. And so I think that tells you how good not only Will Howard might be, but also Avery Johnson. They're going to get really creative in terms of how they run the football. I think you see some two running back sets still. I look at that Kansas State team and say if they can find some difference makers on the defensive line, I'm kind of ready to put them over Utah, but as I look with Utah right now, Cam Rising, a lot of guys coming back and staying healthy on defense would be obviously a massive storyline. This is a really talented Utah team with talented pass catchers that we haven't always seen Utah have. That's why I'm leaning Utah, but that number two team in the Big 12 for me is Kansas State. It's going to be really interesting to see if like Utah's physicality kind of shines through because I don't know that the Big 12 has seen a lot of teams that play the way Utah does. Utah obviously kind of ran the Pac-12 for it felt like for a while, playing that grind teams out, be more physical than them, especially on both sides of the line of scrimmage. I'm kind of interested to see it, but I just think when you have an Avery Johnson, that can be as explosive as I think that offense can be, along with the defense that I think is going to be extremely good. I got, I got and start. Coach Kleiman is just maximizes his team, kind of similar to Kyle Whittingham. you got some dang good coaches in the Big 12. Let's go to number five, the Oregon Ducks. My pick to win the Big Ten as we sit right now. That might change Tuesday night. The only reason I'm so high in Oregon, and I, I'm kind of right with you, I think they are going to be one of the next teams in if they don't win the conference championship. Find me a hole within the Oregon Ducks. I think the big question mark around Oregon, and at least what we've had the conversations with Oregon fans, are they going to be good enough along the defensive line to really be difference makers? Because you look at, I mean, pretty much every national championship caliber team over the last couple of years, it starts on the defensive line. They did some work in the transfer portal. Was it enough? Guys like Jamari Caldwell, Derek Harmon, do you see some stats from guys like Mateo Yu? That's what I'm looking at for Oregon. And if you do get that defensive line that rivals some of the top teams in the country, I look the rest of this roster, Dylan Gabriel, two NFL tackles, very, very good wide receivers and say there's not many holes. There's not a lot of reasons to bet against the Oregon Ducks heading into 2024. And I see that for Texas and Oregon. That's why I think those two would be three and four, if you will, if we were like doing this straight up and, and yep. you put them there. So I think those are the second, those are the kind of next crop, if you will, in my mind, three, four. So obviously they got to be five, six for the at-large bids. But those two are, or those four teams, Texas, Georgia, Ohio State, and Oregon are by, by far for me the most complete teams. I, I think I would agree with that too. You look at the national championship odds, that would also agree. You look at those four teams and say those are probably the four favorites to win the college football playoffs. 
going to Texas, I think you start with quarterback Quinn Ewers. And again, preseason, where I look at a lot of these teams, I always start with the quarterback. Like, what quarterbacks do I trust the most? What's so fascinating about Quinn Ewers is what happens if he takes that step going into 2024. You saw him play solid football in 2022, obviously getting banged up, played better football in 2023. If he kind of reaches that potential, that next step that I know a lot of Texas fans kind of believe with Quinn Ewers, they're going to be a special team. And I think what separates Texas over the last couple of years and what separates them from last year, this year and last year was the line of scrimmage play. And the line of scrimmage play is some of the better that you'll see not only in the SEC, but in the country. And then you couple that with Quinn Ewers, talented wide receivers with Coach Sark running the offense. It It's hard to bet against this Texas team as being one of the better teams in all of college football. Yeah, you get no argument from me. I think the only slight question is probably what their defensive line is going to look like, having to replace two exceptional players with Byron Murphy and Sweat. But I think, again, you look, Alfred Collins is a hammer. Their edge rushers are going to be really, really good. So I I think I'm comfortable with what that defense is going to be. I think the secondary is going to be vastly improved with both young guys developing, adding a couple really interesting pieces in the portal. Texas, they're as complete as you can get in this country, I think. You great. you noted something that I don't think enough people are talking about is how good that edge rusher room could be. I think everyone wants to talk about how they're going to replace Tavondre Sweat and guys like Byron Murphy. They have Alfred Collins, which you pointed out. They made some moves in the transfer portal, but man, that edge rusher room. You talk about manufacturing a pass rush. That's where I think it's going to come from for this Texas team versus last year, kind of more manufactured from the inside of the defensive line. Going to number seven, Notre Dame, Riley Leonard coming in. I think you start with Notre Dame. It, I'm not going to say it's a cakewalk schedule. It's a very gettable yeah, schedule. Very and I'll tell you this, week one against Texas A&M on the road, if they can go on the road, get that one done. I almost think this Notre Dame team's a lot to make the playoffs because, one, I am very high on Texas A&M, but more importantly, the rest of the way, I don't think they'll face a more challenging game than what you see week one in College Station on the well, road. The only, the only other game they have is Florida State, and if they just win one of those games, they're a lot to me for this college football playoff. So they really have no excuses to not be in. How high they'll be, I think it's debatable, but I think they have a really good chance of running the table. I think they can easily come in at that seven spot, and I don't know that they're the seventh best team in the country, although they're not far off. I don't want to like uh, – I mean, Notre Dame can win this national championship. They've been playing good football despite some pretty poor – quarterback play Sam Hartman was not the answer last year at all I think Riley Leonard he feels like a winner to me at least whether he does it with his legs whether he does it with his arms that magical year he put together in 2022 for Duke if they get that play from him this defense is really good top to bottom great I think their offensive line is a bit of a question but you got to trust a little bit the development that Notre Dame's made for the past it feels like 15 years or so at that spot so I think this is a team that if Riley Leonard plays really well with their defense, they can be really, really two good. Two points that I would like to point out. One, you better hope USC fans are not listening at minute 13, saying you got no other games on the schedule. And number two, number two, I'm a believer in Riley Leonard too. I think that, and you said it best, kind of reminds me a little bit of Will Howard, just a gamer. Like, I don't know if Riley Leonard is going to be a top 32 pick in the NFL draft, but man, that dude just knows how to win football games. And if you can win at a high level at Duke, Hopefully no Duke fans are listening. You're going to be able to win at a high level at Notre Dame as well. Going into the number eight team, Ole Miss. Dill, what separates Ole Miss is what they've done against the line, all along the line of scrimmage. This is the reason that I was a believer in Texas last year and a believer in Ole Miss this year. Hey, I know Jackson Dart, Trey Harris, Juice Wells, Lane Kiffin calling the offense. This is an offense that's going to put points on the board. But Lane Kiffin, again, this was a team that went 11-2 and two last year. Only two losses were on the road to Alabama and Georgia, two of the best teams in the country. But what's the difference? How did they close that gap? They got better along the line of scrimmage. They have NFL dudes along the line of scrimmage. That's what separates me for Ole Miss. I'm a believer in Ole Miss as well. Number nine. I think they're one thing. Their offensive line, I'd have them higher if I was really, really confident their yeah. offensive line would play at that. I think they did what they needed to do on their defensive line. I'm really comfortable with that unit. The offensive line, I like what they did. But I still think it's really, really hard to build through the portal. Good offensive lines. That's what I'm going to be looking at. If their offensive line is good, not just like average, because I think that's kind of where they were at last year, but a good or a really pretty solid SEC unit, 
that team could probably be much higher in my or right up there at five, six in my rankings. They're are they're really complete outside of that. Yeah, opinion. that and it's specifically when you're playing teams, the top teams in the SEC that have really Jackson good. Dart to me is a true difference maker at quarterback. I think when I did my rankings, I think I had him three or four. I think he certainly belongs there. He is right up there with my him. pick to win the Heisman, Jackson Dart. Number nine, the Miami Hurricanes. The guy, this team is this team. I don't think people realize like everyone in the national media just wants to talk about Cam Ward and Damian Martinez. Very good football players in and of itself. This defensive line, the front seven, it's going to be very good. I think they have multiple guys that will go to the NFL after this year. That's what's not getting talked enough about. You have so many people saying, Oh, we're believing in the Miami Hurricanes again. There's two differences. One, they have a quarterback that is a difference maker in Cam Ward. And number two, they have a legitimate front seven that can be one of the better units in the country. Those are the type of things that are separating Miami from last year. Dill, very similar to how we talked about Texas 12 months ago. Texas and Miami have always had that talent, but they're finally right along the line of scrimmage, and that's what makes them different heading into 2024. Going to what? We got our number 10 team, the Missouri Tigers. I'll I'll give you the floor here. I know that'll be a contested one. Missouri Tigers coming in at number 10, how we feel. And, and I can get that, but I think you look, that's a very, very gettable schedule. I think that Alabama game to me is a play-in game. I think when those two meet, that's going to be for that kind of fourth seed, I guess, or fourth SEC team getting into the college football playoff. I'm going Missouri in that game. I think Missouri is so complete right now. People don't give them credit because, oh, it's just Missouri. They were down a little bit. Coach Drinkwitz has that team back. They have – arguably the best wide receiver quarterback battery in all of college football. I think, yes, Oregon fans will definitely give me some grief. Certainly Ole Miss fans will too. But that Luther Burden and Connor Cook, or Brady Cook, I should say, are right up there with anyone. They're going to be able to put points on the board. To me, it'll be about if their defense has enough top-end talent. That's kind of what yeah. I'm looking at. I think it'll be a good unit, but can it be as good as it was last year where you had a bunch of legitimate high-level dudes I think they did a pretty good job in the portal replacing guys, have a bunch of guys coming back, and they've been exceptionally good at developing their talent. So that's what I'm looking at. I don't know if their defense top end is good enough quite yet, and that we'll see. That's the one thing holding me back from putting them up higher, but I think this is a really complete team, and I think if they beat Alabama, they're in. And sp- I, for one, I didn't realize you left Alabama out. So Alabama fans certainly. Oh, that's me. that's the that's the game. I was minute, minute seventeen. If any that. Alabama <laughs> fans probably turn the boys off, they're gonna be hot about it. Dill, I think one of the things you left out about Missouri that makes me a believer in Missouri, and I don't know if I'm necessarily gonna put them in my college football playoffs. I'm probably gonna have them on the outside looking in. Offensive line plays great. Right. It's it's really really good. And again, you talk about the separators specifically in that conference. I think Missouri's going to have one of the better units in the country, in the country and in the SEC on the offense. They're there. Line. They're physically like where they need to be. I think you saw yeah. them play Georgia. Like they weren't getting run off the field. I think, again, I'll be looking at that defensive line. Obviously, got to replace a bunch of guys, got to replace some secondary guys. But this is a team that I think Coach Drinkwitz is doing a fabulous job there. I think he's got them close. And I think Luther Burden and Brady Cook can, they can. When you have them. a quarterback wide receiver battery like that, it's hard to lose games. And it's very easy to win big games. Number 11, Penn State. I think this is a team. I like Penn State. Hey, hey, Penn State is going to be a very solid football team. The schedule is very gettable. And they're just, I think their resume, I think they might only have one loss. And so it's going to be really hard to keep Penn State out of the college football playoffs. I think the question is, are they going to have enough big time wins to get themselves in? This Penn State team also has a higher ceiling than I probably just gave them credit for. Like if Coach Coldnicky comes in from Kansas and just reinvigorates this offense, and this offense goes from honestly just one of the poorer offenses in the Big Ten to one of the better units, we think the personnel is there. We think Drew has some talent at the quarterback spot. Can this Penn State offense get it together? Because we know the defense is going to be good. That's the question, Dill. Your believer in Coach Coldnicky. I can get with it, and I'm not sure this is a better team than like Michigan or Florida yep. State for that matter. But just looking at the schedule, Penn State never loses games they shouldn't they shouldn't win. I feel like they haven't been upset in forever. They yep. just haven't beaten Michigan or Ohio State. But everyone else, they've really handled business, and they've done it in the way that I mean gets their ranking up. They, if you look at their ranking, they're always in it. I think this defense is obviously mean great again. I just kind of look. I think their schedule sets up where it'd be really hard for them to miss it. But I'm also kind of with you. I don't know that they're going to have the resume to be much higher than that 10 or 11. 
Number 12, group of five bid coming into Liberty. I think you just blindly look at Caden Salter and say, that's my guy. And I'm kind of with you. Like you start looking at the group of five teams. I'm just going to bet on the best quarterback. That's going to be Caden Salter. They have a very, very, very gettable schedule. Hard to see Liberty losing any games. Give them to me as well as that 12 seed getting in. Dill, that'll do it. Again, left a lot of good teams off the list. Florida State and Michigan, I think, are looking at that group of five team getting in, and they got to be sick. because You I don't, don't feel good. I can tell you don't even feel good about your playoff rankings, and I probably won't feel good Tuesday night either. It's, a, it's hard to keep out some teams. like You do so much prep on all of these teams. I, think, awesome. I don't think we appreciate how much like kind of the middle of that field gets – contested because we haven't had to think about it we've just been like it's all about been that top four and i think the top four has always kind of been able to separate itself but i think you kind of look if you think back i mean differentiating between the eighth and the 12th team or the 12th and the 15th team i think is always going to be really really tight because everyone's going to have their blemishes and 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 in sussing it out, we just haven't had to do it. No one's really cared because if you're not it's top four, it's going to cares. get a lot more complicated than it was with just four teams. You, you always had like maybe that five and six seed that you would argue should have gotten in. Though there's going to be four or five, maybe six, seven teams yeah. that have legitimate. I mean, Michigan, say Michigan goes nine and three with their only losses to Oregon, Texas, and Ohio State. That's a legitimate cause to be, hey, we probably deserve a bid to the college football playoffs because we lost to three of the teams that are going to be in the top six of the polls, top five teams in the country. That's kind of what it comes down to. Again, it's going to I think it's going to make the end of the college football season an absolute blast because these games are going to matter in November for a lot of different teams where, I mean, if you're a Penn State fan, you got two losses to Michigan, Ohio State, you kind of chalked it. You ain't chalking any games anymore in November. Really excited. Again, appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. If you made it to the 22-minute mark, we appreciate you guys. If you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you all later.